to IdeaGen TV. Today, I am honored and thrilled to have with us Matt Helmet, Director, Sustainability Transformation at Microsoft. Matt, welcome. Thank you for having me, George. Pleasure to be here. You know, Matt, it's all about leadership and you're leading the way on sustainability transformation at Microsoft. I'd like to go right into this interview and ask you, please introduce yourself to our global audience. And if you could give us a highlight, I know we'll get into this during this interview, but if you could provide us with an, uh, you know, just a highlight of your work, this incredible work that you're doing at Microsoft, I think our global audience would be thrilled. Absolutely. Um, so Matt Hellman, uh, Director of Sustainability Transformation at Microsoft, as you've mentioned, um, I've been doing sustainability throughout my career, um, first starting when I was um, after after school, I worked at the State Department um, doing uh, economic trade, commercial and climate change policy uh, for the U.S. Australia relationship and then for the U.S. China relationship. Um, I became super passionate about sustainability when I was uh, in college and university and um, ended up thinking going into government would be one of the best ways to be able to influence and support uh, policy around climate change and, and some of those other areas I was I was just mentioning. Um, but decided actually from the work that I was doing in government that I was really passionate about um, working in business and through business. And so uh, did my MBA. I went and worked for General Electric for several years, uh, working quite literally around the world. Um, I was uh, homeless for several several years, living in Nigeria, living in South Africa and India, um, living in Canada, essentially focusing on different elements of the business and how sustainability energy systems all worked within different business units across General Electric. Um, from there, I uh, worked at General uh, Electric's digital business, uh, doing strategy and operations across Asia and the Americas uh, before coming to Microsoft about five years ago. And here at Microsoft, I've uh, been doing a, a full you know, breadth of, of roles uh, with sustainability uh, very much linked into the work that I've been doing. So, um, you know, particularly over the last couple of years, helping to uh, build out our key go-to-market approaches around sustainability, uh, taking a lot of the key learnings from our own sustainability journey at Microsoft, helping other organizations achieve their 2025, 2030, 2040, 2050 goals around carbon, water, waste, ecosystems, um, and really you know, supporting them with Microsoft technology, best practices, key learnings, uh, key challenges that we faced uh, to support them. So. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm doing uh, right now. Uh, my, uh, my work is really to, to focus on helping other organizations achieve their key sustainability goals um, as quickly and efficiently as possible. And so, Matt, how incredible, how, you know, thank you for collecting the, connecting the dots to, for us to be able and for us, for our global audience to be able to really fully understand your career journey, it, you know, it doesn't just happen. Nothing just happens. I mean, a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, as you've said, you worked in the US government, you've done so many things, GE, you've seen firsthand um, the impact and the importance of sustainability. And so I'd like to ask you, Matt, could you kindly outline the state and the progress of Microsoft's sustainability commitments and how Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability fits into that plan. Absolutely. So first of all, I think important to outline exactly what Microsoft's sustainability goals are. Um, we're not new to sustainability. Actually, we set forth our first sustainability goals back in 2009. Uh, by 2012, we had achieved carbon neutrality um, and had set forth uh, many different sustainability initiatives for the years that followed. Uh, but in 2020, we decided, you know, we were not doing enough and we should do more, quite frankly, to help uh, use our influential power in uh, political forums, 
but also in taking a lot of the key learnings and knowledge that we've been able to, to build out and support other organizations as they're going down their journey. Um, so in 2020, we uh, upped our sustainability goals uh, and said that we would be carbon negative by 2030, which means we're taking more carbon out of the atmosphere than we're putting into it. Um, we also furthered the goal to say that by 2050, we would retroactively take all of the carbon that the company has emitted since its founding in 1975 out of the atmosphere for scopes one, two, and three emissions. Uh, in addition to our carbon goals, we also set forth uh, similar goals around water to be a water positive company by 2030, uh, to be a zero waste company by 2030, and then to protect more land than we use uh, by 2030 as well. In terms of our, uh, you know, sort of uh, where we are against some of those goals, um, you know, I think it's always important to note that, you know, our goal number one um, around sustainability is getting our own house in order. Um, Microsoft's own sustainability, you know, is really our first sphere of influence. And we continue to remain focused on getting our own house in order and delivering on our 2030 commitment. Um, you know, we made those ambitious goals in 2020, and we knew that progress was not always going to be linear. And while those commitments are rooted in science, it does take a lot of steps to protect our ecosystems, to prevent the most severe impacts of climate change. And so, you know, we are very much firmly uh, committed to those 2030 goals um, and making the right long-term investments to support uh, the sustainability of our business uh, in the years to come. Um, sort of a quick update on 2022, um, as we produced um, and released within our most recent sustainability report, uh, which covered 2022, um, our business grew by over 18% and our overall emissions declined by about 0.5%. This is uh, in part from a reduction of our overall direct operational emissions. So this is both scope one and two. Uh, by 22.7%. Um, at Microsoft, uh, scope one and two emissions account for less than 4% of our total emissions, while indirect emissions, um, or scope three, account for over 96% of our emissions. Um, our scope three reported emissions increased slightly in 22 uh, by 0.5%, despite a 25% increase in the purchased goods and services due to our business growth. Um, I would say, you know, sort of the, the final thing is, is that some of the more positive outcomes in 2022 are the result of the improvements in our operation um, that we've been able to build out through real time device telemetry based measurements. Some of the renewable energy investments, we just announced uh, a purchase power agreement with fusion technology that will go into effect in the next couple of years. Um, as well as some of our sustainable aviation fuel purchases and procurement of unbundled renewable energy credits or RECs as we call them. So, you know, final message being that, you know, bold goals, but we remain committed and uh, slowly making progress year over year. Well, that's a humble way to describe it. Uh, bold goals is, um, it's beyond, it's beyond what anyone could ever imagine from a company like Microsoft to have this dedicated commitment uh, leading into 2030. Purchases, like you said, um, initiatives with Lanzajet, I saw that. I mean, there's so many incredible jet fuel initiative. I mean, it's, it's just incredible to see the thought leadership on this issue. And it starts with folks like yourself, Matt. That's why we're so excited to have you on this interview today at IdeaGen Global for our global audience. And I'd like to ask you specifically on sustainability initiatives. They're ever changing, right? I mean, there's a certain marker, but things change. How do you stay nimble, Matt? How do you stay nimble in regard to the sustainability issues at hand on a day-to-day, -day, week to week, month to month, year to year basis? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a really great question. Um, it takes a lot of focus on what's most important, right? I mean, I think regulations are perhaps the scariest thing that exists in the market at the moment. Scariest, not because they're bad. I think, quite frankly, they're they're critical for us to be able to 
shift industry in the direction we need to shift industry. But it's scary in that there's still a lot of ambiguity in this system. And a lot of people and a lot of customers and organizations that I work with, you know, I'll hop on the phone with them and their first question is, I just don't even know where to begin. And I don't know where the landmines are. And so really helping to navigate and create a support system for those organizations um, from a regulatory perspective is really key. And so what I say is, you know, I work very closely with um, a lot of our partners, um, large system integrators, consulting firms to keep abreast of the latest around regulations, industry needs, um, business needs, um, technology advances so that I can have you know, a much more intelligent conversation with customers and organizations that are going through this process. Uh, it's super important to keep on top of the latest research, right? So I have <laughs> subscribed to all of the latest, uh, you know, new services around, you know, what's happening in the world around green tech and sustainability. Um, you know, what are the things that uh, are important as it pertains to technology? Um, so AI is obviously critical, something I'm sure we'll talk about uh, later in this conversation, uh, but really understanding what's the intersection between where AI can help to support sustainability outcomes for organizations. And so really understanding the technology, understanding the, the specific space in which we need to operate in are all really important. And so it, it takes a lot of time researching, talking to customers and organizations talking to our, our uh, partners um, like the McKinsey's, Accenture's, KPMG's of the world uh, to really make sure that uh, we're staying on top of the latest in, in technology, regulations, industry, business needs. And the last thing that I'll note too, and, and I, I perhaps missed it in my previous uh, answer, which is really focused around cloud for sustainability. So uh, Microsoft has been building out a suite of solutions called the Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability, which is really intended to be a full suite of solutions to support our customers with helping to navigate this ambiguous space to help them record their emissions, their water, their waste data, their social governance metrics, to help them actually uh, report on those metrics, and then to make meaningful reduction efforts against all of it as well. Our goal with the solution is to help infuse the latest in uh, all of those ever-changing um, issues of regulations, industry needs, technology advances into a suite of solutions to help our organizations that we work with navigate this space. Microsoft built this solution suite for ourselves as customer one, and we're starting to use it to pull together our reporting for internal and external purposes. And I would note that um, our goal is to, to be able to help take all of that information and share it with the rest of the world. And that's exactly the answer I was looking for. I mean, it's incredible to see that leadership. And so, Matt, how and where and when? How did this all happen? How did you develop this passion for sustainability? And how have you nurtured that throughout your career? especially at Microsoft. And also you mentioned at GE, how, how have you nurtured that? How have you really expanded upon, you, you've mentioned some of the ways, but I'd love to hear, especially for our global audience, how you've really taken that to the next level. Absolutely. You know, look, I, I from a very young age, I've always been passionate about doing something meaningful in the world. I think originally I always thought being a diplomat, you know, doing public service would be the route that I would want to take. And I think at some point soon in the future, it'd be good to also return to that space. Um, I, I have such, you know, uh, reverence for those that do serve the country and um, support, um, you know, the you know, success and health of, of our nation. And so always been super passionate about doing good in the world. Um, but I also found that in some of the work that I did in public service at the State Department was that there was other opportunities to be able to, to do good in the world, but also deliver and drive value for the organizations that I might work for. So that sort of intersection, those, um, 
Venn diagram of, of doing good in the world and also delivering value for the organization and for customers and organization has been core to my value set. I would say, um, you know, how I became passionate is, is from, you know, serving in my local community, serving um, at the federal level, working with um, different organizations. So oftentimes when I was at the State Department, you know, part of my role was working with different organizations who are navigating really complex spaces within China and Australia. And how do we ultimately help lift some of the barriers and red tape and help them understand how we can better, you know, help the business environment within those, those areas. And so I found that I, I could find, um, you know, value in, in supporting the business um, and the industry by uh, sort of switching to the other side. And, you know, I think the other piece too is, um, you know, true to that value set is industry is going to be critical, you know, truly mission critical for decarbonization efforts and for us to achieve our global goals to fight climate change. Uh, and so if there's anything that I can do uh, within the business world and through the engagements that I have with different organizations and Microsoft's customers and partners to help them think through the problems that they're solving for differently and to use technology and strategy to decarbonize different parts of their business, that helps me to go back to that that original Venn diagram, that value set of doing good in the world, and then also being able to deliver value for the economy, deliver value for the organizations that I work with, and of course, deliver value for Microsoft. And so Matt, that, that's incredible to hear this journey. I mean, it's, it's a journey, it's a passion, it's an ethos. And so Microsoft is sitting at, by all accounts, sitting at the fore, the forefront of AI advancement. What opportunities, Matt, does this technology provide to assist you and the entire company in achieving this incredible sustainability mission? You know, the advancement in AI is, is is going to be incredible. Um, you know, I think first, first and foremost, as it pertains to sustainability, um, generative AI is going to help us sift through tons and tons of data and distill the most important points to help key decision makers and organizations make decisions faster. And that's going to be huge. Um, imagine, you know, sifting through IPCC reports or through um, years and years of, of climate data and being able to make um, important decisions about your business or about how we're, you know, constructing and building out regulations. Um, I hope that, you know, we'll be able to become much smarter in not only doing the work that we need to do, uh, whether it's in government or within organizations, uh, but on the individual level as well. I think also, um, you know, Copilot is something that Microsoft has launched recently and in infusing in all of the solutions that we've got, um, helping to, you know, get access to information fast and accurate uh, with all of the right reference information associated with the data that you're pulling in, but also uh, do amazing things such as, you know, uh, read through, you know, troves and troves of data and start to detect anomalies. Um, understand where spikes in emissions might be coming from or, you know, downtime for specific assets within a factory. So I think helping to make, um, you know, and improve the lives of, uh, you know, different sustainability specialists or stakeholders to, to make uh, decisions uh, much more fast and accurately uh, than they perhaps might have done before. Um, of course, in addition to that, you know, Microsoft is building AI into, you know, all of our products and solutions to perform, you know, advanced analytics and generate, you know, detailed, actionable insights, you know, helping to speed up process such as some of the intelligence insights that I was mentioning, but also, you know, do what if analysis, you know, if I do one thing, how could it potentially forecast emissions impact over time? and you know sort of change various uh, consumption variables as a result so i think some really incredible things that we can do with ai um, not only with technology uh, and uh, sort of the the carbon accounting work that that needs to be done for organizations but also uh, to help speed up 
research and development uh, to, to hopefully find solutions to, um, you know, decarbonize the, the world um, much faster than, than we, you know, may be able to do otherwise without that data and that information. With such incredibly powerful insights and perspectives, Matt, and I'd like to ask probably one of the most difficult questions for the simple reason that you've been involved in so many projects and initiatives specifically, as we discussed on sustainability. But I'd like to ask you if it's at all possible, I know it's difficult, but if it's at all possible, is there, Matt, a specific project and or initiative that you are involved in or have been involved in that you're most excited about and especially proud of? Uh, first, I'd, I'd love to level set, right? Um, you know, 52 billion is the number of metric tons of greenhouse gases that are emitted every year. Um, zero is where we need to aim in order to avoid the worst outcomes of climate disasters. Um, it sounds hard because it is hard. Um, and I know that, you know, Bill Gates really says, says the exact same thing that I, that I just mentioned in his most recent book, uh, about how to avoid a climate disaster, you know, get to zero, deploy tools like we've never, you know, had before, like solar, wind, geothermal, faster and smarter, and then create some of those breakthrough technologies to take us the rest of the way. Um, whether it's capturing carbon and storing it or, you know, collecting it directly from the air or perhaps doing something we don't even know exists yet. Um, with that all said, I think one of the biggest areas of uh, our global emissions, the biggest you know, part of the 52 billion is uh, about 40 percent, which comes from uh, buildings, right? Residential and commercial buildings consume about 40 percent of total U.S. energy generation, um, 50 percent percent of natural gas consumption and then more than 70 percent of uh, national electricity consumption. And so, um, you know, substantial um, uh, work needs to do, you know, needs to be, uh, you know, taken place in order for us to, to be able to achieve uh, the types of reductions that we need to to achieve. But it's a huge opportunity uh, to use, uh, you know, intelligent, you know, uh, AI, uh, smart meters, um, IoT sensors, uh, digital twins to be able to help us improve efficiencies within the space. And so um, one of the areas that I've, I've found uh, most interesting and fun to work in while at the same time being most meaningful is uh, smart and, and green buildings, uh, smart and green uh, factories not only to drive efficiencies in how we're consuming energy within those particular buildings and uh, locations, but also just because there's a, a ton of opportunity to uh, to decarbonize within this space and help us to get to, to zero so much faster. And also just a, a great space uh, for cutting edge AI technologies uh, as well. You know, we've implemented here at Microsoft um, you know, smart buildings, uh, technology that have helped us to achieve about 15 to 25% um, savings on energy costs. Um, we expect that we can achieve uh, at least 20% more from just implementing some of the AI technology uh, within our buildings as well. And so, you know, I think the, the last thing that I would say here, um, in addition to, you know, specific projects or initiatives that I'm most excited about being buildings, but it's all about, you know, sort of the balance between doing good and delivering value, right? As I was saying with my own mission statement, um, doing good, because obviously we're able to decarbonize, you know, a, a substantial space uh, in the world, you know, buildings, but at the same time, the cost savings are enormous for the business. And so it's sort of a no brainer. Why would we not want to implement technology practices to help us achieve cost savings to support the business over the long term and the short term, but at the same time also do good in the world. And so I think that balance not only is true for me and my own values, but also uh, represents really what sustainability is all about, which is that balance between doing good in the world and also achieving costs, cost savings and value for, for different organizations. Matt, what a journey. What an incredible journey, but most importantly, what an incredible outcome. You know, the outcomes are really what 
are so inspiring here. I mean, you all have set the marker. You know, it's that golf analogy. You can see the pen. It's cloudy. It's raining. Regardless, you can see the pen in the distance. And that's what you've done. You've put a marker down. You put that marker down. And these examples that you've shared with us today are incredible for the simple reason that there's outcomes. There's, there's something happening. It's not just we're thinking about or one day we will. It's a conversation. The inspiring part of this conversation is it's about what's happening. And of course, there's a larger goal. And you've just, you know, you've really aptly stated, you know, what the broad impact is and, and the distance we need to go. And so on that note, Matt, I'd like to close by asking you, what is your call to action? What is your call to action for this global audience that is clamoring to hear more about what Microsoft is doing? What is that call to action? Absolutely. You know, I think call to action is different for different personas. Um, and I would say, <laughs> first and foremost, you know, for startups and developers and people who are interested in jobs and sustainability, I would say, you know, number one, um, develop ESG solutions. There is a hugely untapped market, over a trillion dollars uh, in in TAM by you know 2025 of hardware services and software just within ESG space. Um, you know, uh, so much potential, so much untapped space. Uh, I would say, for startups, developers, and people who are interested in this space, um, why not? focus your energy on building something new to help solve the climate crisis. Um, I would say there's a ton of you know barriers for sure, such as access to finance and to um, you know barriers to entry, um, such as perhaps like technology know-how, but I would say they're lowering, right? Um, and I think the space is is ripe for disruption. I would also say, you know, if you're a consumer um, or, you know, a citizen of the, of the world, you know, use ESG solutions um, because you care, um, because, you know, you may also ultimately have to um, over time. Um, and then I would say also just tap into a ton of resources that exist in the world, uh, whether it's resources that Microsoft provides through LinkedIn, you know, to help upskill, reskill, and train uh, individuals within the sustainability space. There's tons of access to, to free resources online through LinkedIn and through Microsoft, but also access to, to funding, right? Um, so free Azure credits if you're a startup. Um, development tools that are free, such as GitHub Enterprise or Azure OpenAI Services, um, M365 licenses, Office Teams, uh, tons of resources available to people who are uh, interested in that space. Um, for a different persona, perhaps uh, government, I would say, you know, critical to work in bipartisanship on climate change. Important to invest in the future with, uh, you know, meaningful regulations investments to help change behavior. And I think this is a space that it shouldn't be bipolar. Uh, it should be um, a, a completely bipartisan space. Um, because again, as I mentioned, there is a balance between doing good in the world, but also at the same time being able to, to see value for uh, citizens of the country and the world, uh, but also for business as well. And the last piece that I would share is with the business sector, which is you know in, in sustainability. Um, you know, partly because you have to, of course, from a regulatory perspective, um, but also, you know, it's shown time and time again that over 90% of uh, companies that invest in ESG and have ESG practices do better than others within their group, uh, their similar groupings. So all I would say is, uh, of course, invest in sustainability. And at the end of the day, um, if you need help with your sustainability journey, come to Microsoft. <laughs> Well said, Matt. And what a closing word that, that if you if you need help, go to Microsoft on your sustainability journey. Matt Hellman, Director, Sustainability Transformation at Microsoft. Thank you for your thought leadership. Thank you for the impact you're making to change the world and help achieve those 17 global goals of the United Nations by 2030 with the markers you and Microsoft had set. 
It's leadership defined. Thank you so very much. Thank you.